One of the scariest things that may happen to a parent is the fear of losing their child. Fortunately, it doesn't happen often, but when it does, it can be very upsetting for the parents and other loved ones. Unfortunately, there are a lot of instances where kids have vanished and were never discovered. Everyone feared the worst when young Ricky Chakevdia vanished in 2007, and authorities were unable to locate him for more than two years. Fortunately, in a strange turn of events, a dresser held the key to the young boy's whereabouts. When he vanished in November 2007, four-year-old Ricky Chikhevdia was a joyful and energetic child. When Ricky and his mother vanished mysteriously without a trace, the boy's parents were engaged in a contentious custody dispute. Since Ricky and Shannon were believed to have vanished following a dispute between Shannon and Ricky's father, the police initially did not pay much attention to their disappearance. However, this quickly turned out to be false. Ricky and Shannon were unable to be found despite the local police's best efforts. It was as if they had vanished off the face of the earth. The authorities, as well as Ricky's grandmother, believed that Ricky's father, Michael Chikevdia, was somehow connected to the disappearance. The odds were stacked against Michael, but he maintained his innocence and continued to look for his son. Strangely, Shannon and Ricky vanished shortly after the judge gave Ricky's father, Michael, full custody of him. The police suspected Shannon had left with Ricky in order to keep Ricky's father from asserting his parental rights. Police issued a warrant for Shannon Wilfong's arrest, but they were unable to locate the youngster or his mother. When Ricky's grandmother, Diana Dobbs, was eventually questioned by the police, she quickly asserted that Michael was abusive and that Shannon might have left to keep Ricky from growing up in an abusive atmosphere. Diane worked so hard to present a flawless portrait of her daughter that the police began to question her motivations. Was the grandma only acting out of genuine concern for her family, or was she attempting to divert attention from her granddaughter? Diane went so far as to start a full-fledged smear campaign against Michael, and even distributed flyers at his church that denigrated him. Shannon's statements and accusations against Michael led to his being seen with mistrust, but he maintained his composure and didn't let the negative remarks affect him. Michael had been worried Shannon might have been connected to Ricky's disappearance ever since, but he had never been able to locate any proof to support his fears. The neighborhood police had also been searching for Shannon and Ricky for two years without even a scrap of information to lead them in the correct way. People began to forget about Ricky and his inexplicable disappearance as the days and months passed, but his father never stopped seeking for him. Could this be the information that everyone had been waiting for? when the police received a call that would change their lives suddenly and without warning. It was inconceivable that Ricky had been so near to his helpless father all this time and that they had discovered him right where they had. Ricky was nowhere to be found, so how did he manage to vanish right in front of everyone's eyes? Michael and the police were starting to lose faith that Ricky would never be located. They needed a miracle as they needed air. When everyone had given up hope that anything could be done, the cops received a call telling them to look under the dresser. The police examined Ricky's grandmother's home when Ricky and Shannon had gone missing two years ago, but they were unable to discover the young child. They were going to search the residence once more, but this time they were prepared with precise information. Just as the caller had described, a heavy wooden dresser was positioned in an inconvenient location when the police arrived at Diane Dobbs' home. Nobody on the police team anticipated what they would find when they pulled the furniture out from under them. Could this be the time that has been anticipated by everyone? Who knew what was hidden under the dresser? They were surprised to discover Shannon and Ricky inside the tiny room that was hidden by the enormous wooden dresser that concealed the door to another room. In the room's corner, the two were hiding, which was about the size of a washing machine and was undoubtedly unlivable. Ricky and Shannon appeared to have been residing in the cramped quarter for the two years they had been gone. And since they were so effectively concealed, no one had ever seen Ricky during that time. The area where Ricky was residing was actually so little that it shouldn't have been termed a room, rather appropriately describing it as a crawl space between two walls. He and his mother's inability to live in such a little place for almost two years is simply incredible. How was it possible that no one ever saw or heard the two? Ricky was compelled to spend the day indoors and was not even permitted to gaze out the windows of the home. Instead, Ricky was completely cut off from the outside world, and the blinds were kept closed at all times. 
Diane and Shannon might keep Ricky hidden from prying eyes that might reveal his location by doing all this. Ricky raced and played like a youngster who had never seen the outside when he finally emerged from the cramped room to daylight, clean air, and lush grass. Regardless of the mother's motivations, nobody could understand how she could keep her child locked away for such a prolonged period of time. This was a heartbreaking moment for the police officers. Shannon and Diane were both charged and taken into custody shortly after. Diane insisted on their innocence and claimed that they were merely acting in Ricky's best interests by shielding him from his father, even as the two were being taken to court. Diane appeared on a chat show after being freed on bail and she stated that Ricky had only been in the cramp space for a total of five minutes. Unfortunately for Diane, no one any longer paid attention to what she had to say, and soon after appearing on the program, she was again jailed. After being located, social services took possession of Ricky to keep him safe while they determined if it was okay for him to return home. Ricky and his father would be reunited after the investigation was finished. Michael eagerly anticipated the time that he would be able to embrace his son once more. Shannon was also taken into safe custody on the interim, though it's possible that this safe custody was a little less pleasant, as she was detained in county jail, pending the conclusion of the investigation and the trial. Shannon experienced a dose of her own medicine. She could at least access a window, natural light, and fresh air. Shannon wasn't locked up by herself. While they awaited a judge to hear their case, and determine whether or not they were guilty of kidnapping a minor, her mother was also imprisoned. The mother and grandmother of Ricky hoped to persuade the jury that they were solely thinking for Ricky's welfare. They persisted in saying that Michael was abusive and that they were innocent. Nevertheless, who would believe them? Despite all the difficulties and setbacks Michael encountered, he never gave up or tried to enforce the law on his own. Instead, he made the decision to patiently wait until the legal and social services systems made it possible for him to have a long-term relationship with his son. Social workers thoroughly examined Ricky to make sure he wasn't experiencing post-traumatic stress disorder or any form of maltreatment. Although it may appear cruel, this was done to make sure Ricky was going back to a caring father who would look out for him and provide a secure home. Michael triumphed in what must have seemed like a long and unfair process, and now he has the right and the power to defend his kid and live with him in peace. The boy's father was given exclusive custody by the court and is now proud of how he fought for his son and never gave up hope that he would be discovered. The question was now, why would a mother kidnap her own child? Is it because she feared that she wasn't Ricky's favorite parent or that she couldn't get to see him after his father was granted full custody? We will never fully understand Sharon's motivations for acting in such an odd manner, and to this day, she has resisted revealing the secret. Sharon Wilfong admitted to the counts of kidnapping during the court proceeding, but she gave no explanation for her actions or provided any information regarding the two years that she and Ricky were away. She didn't say anything, which only made the case against her stronger. Shannon's mother, Diane Dobbs, provided some assistance in executing her kidnapping ruse. Along with her daughter, Dobbs was also accused with criminal kidnapping. Nevertheless, the two insisted they'd done nothing wrong during their trial. Now that Ricky is residing with a stable parent in a family-friendly environment, he is doing incredibly well and is back with his father where he belongs, despite the fact that he will likely never know the underlying motivation behind Shannon's actions. Ricky has recovered well from his awful experience and now enjoys being around his father. Fortunately, Ricky doesn't appear to have any lasting physical or mental effects from the horrible experience. Ricky is an extremely active young boy who spends the most of his time outdoors, according to those who are close to him and Michael. We can surely comprehend how spending nearly two years indoors can alter one's perspective of the outside world. Today, Ricky is a regular teenager who enjoys taking part in a range of sporting activities. Normally, his proud father is by his side to acknowledge his successes. Friends, thanks for watching till the end. We'll see you in the next video.